Really early on in our game, we ran into a bunch of problems with snowballing. This ended up being a lot more complicated of a problem than we expected it to be. So that's what this video is gonna be about. Here's snowballing in the bazaar. So most games want to reward their players for playing well. You want to give them some sort of positive reinforcement for getting a kill or scoring a point or doing something that you want them to do in your game. A lot of times when you give a player an advantage, it makes it easier for them to get the next advantage, to kill the next monster, to score the next point and keep getting more and more advantages. And this kind of cascade effect is what we call snowballing. This makes it pretty easy for snowballing to get out of hand in a game. So we want to make sure that we learned everything we could about it so that we could avoid the problem. The players only ever discuss snowballing of a game once it's become a problem. But at its core, snowballing is not a bad thing. When current game events impact future ones, it makes the player care about the entirety of the game. The early decisions should make an impact later in the game. Otherwise, it doesn't feel like it matters. We could decide the winner of a game based only on who makes the last mistake. It would remove all the snowballing. But if we did that, Players suddenly don't have to care about the first 100 errors they make. All they have to do is avoid being the last one to make an error. So when exactly does snowballing become a problem? Well, we think it's when it happens too quickly or when snowballing decides the game a very long time before it actually ends. In most games, after some amount of snowballing's happened, one player has been playing better, they get more rewards, the rewards help them win more, and eventually a player gets a really big lead, an insurmountable lead, basically to the point where player two has no chance of coming back and winning. If your game drags on for like five or 10 minutes after it's already been decided, those five or 10 minutes kinda suck for both players. This graph represents one game. The x-axis is the time that the game has lasted, and the y-axis is the chance that each player has to win. When a game snowballs too quickly, one player reaches a 100% chance to win too early in the game. All this time is spent just waiting for the game to end. Both players already know how it's going to end. And this is really frustrating and, and boring. All it takes is one long, grueling game for a player to quit altogether. Some games are really guilty of doing this poorly, where it feels like you play this entire game but only a couple of the cards or events that happened just decided the winner. And it's even worse when those events are random. Suppose we had a very back and forth game going that was really close, and then all of a sudden there was just this huge spike and suddenly one player was an overwhelming favorite. Now, this spike could be a lot of things. It could be a player finding a broken item or a broken vehicle, or maybe they destroyed the opponent's only way to win the game. In Hearthstone, cards like Yogg Saran and Shutterwalk tend to cause a spike like this. Regardless of what this spike is, just the fact that something like this exists means that the rest of the game doesn't feel like it matters very much. A better way to handle snowballing is to have the player's rewards grow over the course of a game. In a MOBA, for example, maybe you get 50 gold for the first kill, 100 gold the second time you kill somebody, 150 gold the third time. Basically, the rewards grow throughout the course of a game. So even if you're the one that got killed early on, you still feel like you're in it and you have a chance of coming back. And that feeling would not really be there if players were getting 150 gold every time right off the bat. The swings need to be big enough so that they feel like they matter compared to the ones that happened before, but not so big that they invalidate the things that are going to happen in the future. And if the swings get bigger, the losing team only needs to win one or two events for them to come back into the game. Card games that use mana kind of naturally do this too. Early game, you can lose control of the board, but the creatures that your opponent gets to keep, the ones that stick around and keep hitting you, they're kind of small because they didn't have that much mana to start with. But later in the game, players are spending six mana, seven mana, 10 mana per turn. And at that point, the swings become bigger and bigger as the game went on. So now I'll show you what an ideal snowballing curve would look like. Let's say the first little game event goes in favor of the first player, and they have a small advantage. And they use this advantage to win the second game event. It gives them a pretty big lead. Now the third one goes in favor of their opponent, against all odds. And it's going to make a bigger impact on the game than the first two did, and it brings the game nearly back to parity. This is how the game continues throughout, 
with the swings getting a little bit bigger each time. The game keeps having these swings back and forth, and then eventually one player just reaches 100%, and that's the moment where the game needs to end in a perfect world. Game designers are always trying to minimize the amount of time that the game lasts after the winner is clear. And that brings us back to the bazaar. In the bazaar, we ran into some pretty serious snowballing problems pretty early. We really like the idea of our players having maximum agency and freedom over what they can do, so all the weapons in our game could target pretty much anything. After shooting a weapon, the weapon didn't take any damage back from the thing that it's shooting. So unlike in a game like Magic or Hearthstone where the minions hit each other, the attacks in our game had no penalty. We actually really like these traits. It made attacking feel really satisfying and fluid, but we didn't really want to compromise on them. And the problem is, when weapons are that good and that flexible, your game's just inherently more snowball -y. A lot of our games are getting decided very quickly and very early, just based off the first few buys that people would make. Somebody that got a weapon that was good at controlling the board early could keep controlling the board over time, and one player would end up with just a bunch of cards and complete board control, and the other player would end up with nothing. To make the game less about snowballing early leads, we decided to separate the board, the place where your items go after you buy them, into two separate rows instead of just one. Players would have to fight through all the stuff in the front row before they're allowed to target the stuff in the back row. And we think this is a pretty elegant defensive mechanic because it lets the defending player have control over what it is they want to protect. If I have some sort of fragile support item, I can just buy that to the back row, but if I just want something that's very durable and big, uh, I can just throw that in the front to defend my other stuff. Since fragile cards wouldn't be at risk of getting destroyed right away anymore, uh, this really helped mitigate the snowballing problem. Besides the two row system, we ended up adding way more defensive mechanics into our game. We realized that defensive cards had to be way more common and way more powerful to balance out the strength of attacking. Another thing we tried to mitigate this snowballing problem is to create a buy phase before people could start attacking each other's stuff. Initially in the game, you could just start by buying one weapon, and then on turn two, you'd be able to attack with it right away. And then on turn three, you attack with it again. On turn four, you attack with it again. So players are really incentivized to buy like large items early or things that can fight for the board right away. And they were kind of discouraged from picking up these like synergistic support cards. So in order to help change this, what we ended up doing is creating a buy phase at the beginning of the game before people could attack. So basically, instead of buying one item and being able to attack with it right away, now there was a phase where players took turns buying items until each player had three, and then they were allowed to attack each other's stuff. Snowballing's a really hard thing to get right. In our game, it was a problem because it was basically built into the fundamental rules of the game. Games need to reward players for doing well, but every player in the game needs to feel like they have a chance of winning the entire way through. I hope some of you guys found this interesting. We'll see you guys back right here next Friday for another update for The Bazaar.